Uh, hello viewers today we have pal with us so uh, she is doing her uh, bachelor's in um, business administration from the university of uh, regina so let's uh, uh, get to know her experience and the uh, kind of course that she is look into thanks a lot pal for joining today thank you venkatesh for uh, having me i'm really thrilled to get on to this conversation and share my experience and journey so far great So uh, can you please introduce your background uh, in getting into admission into this particular program Okay for sure so uh, hi everyone my name is Pal Agarwal and I hail from Calcutta which is a state in uh, which is a city in West Bengal India I come from a science background where I did a uh, PCM with computer science and economics till grade 12 and then i i entered university of regina with a bachelor's in economics and later on switched to finance uh, business of business administration with a major in finance so that is what my educational journey has been so far right so uh, what kind of experience uh, is it necessary to get admission into this particular program So for a uh, business administration uh well you need to have at least uh, a certain amount of percentage in grade 12 with at least 6.5 in IELTS I had an 8 overall 8 or 8.5 overall and uh, yeah you need to just have a good score uh, in your high school and some extra curriculars look also well for scholarships and if you have 85% or above you can also get an entrance scholarship from university of regina international of $3000 so those are the criteria to meet uh, in order to get into hill school of business which is the business faculty in the university of regina right yeah there is no such a uh, hardcore uh, eligibility to meet to enter university of regina but eventually when you choose your major and things like that yeah it gets a little more uh, maybe i would say a little bit more complex right so uh, you have entered into a bachelor's course uh, and um, i also uh, noticed that you have a bachelor's in economics you mentioned uh, in your profile so i'm just curious did you join it directly after your high school or did you do any program in india before uh, uh, studying abroad Yeah so I did a lot of jump before coming to Canada because I I am a person who is like who wants a backup for a backup mm-hmm. so with the immigration process and everything I just thought that it's better to have at least some program in case anything happens right so I for so I got a 97.75 in grade 12 and after that I immediately took admission in St Xavier's College in Calcutta with a bachelor science in computer science and I was interning in two places that time and uh, from there I switched to Delhi University with a bachelor's in economics and by that time my immigration confirmation had arrived so i moved to university of regina with a bachelor's in economics mm-hmm. and now uh, like 4 to 5 months into the university i switched to finance right so that is where i am right now it seems like okay i made a lot of jumps mm-hmm. but it was only because i just wanted to be uh, sure of right. where i am without taking any wrong decisions right right yeah that's totally makes sense especially when you are planning something as big as moving abroad it's always good to um, have some backup plans uh, always uh, have that plan in mind right exactly so, yeah so as as uh, from school when we want to plan to st- go abroad when should we start planning uh, giving those exams and uh, what kind of uh, before um, because the admissions process completes early in um, abroad so when should we plan uh, because we, uh, should we wait for our results to come out or how should we plan about it so i was a little late for my application simply because i had not specifically planned to come to canada for a long time it was something that i was planning to do my masters in or like go to states or something but uh, eventually i figured out that no i think it would be best to just come right away mm-hmm. but it the financial planning started for my family and my like parents especially 6 to 7 years ago because 
uh, you have to plan a lot, save and everything. So we had figured that out because I was always sure that I wanted to go abroad at some point of time. Uh, regarding the exams, well, it depends from university to university, your goals and the course that you're going for. Most universities in Canada just need a good high school grade and certain amount of extracurricular requ requirements to get in. Whereas others, they need SATs and AP exams. Uh, it's a very good thing to take up SAT. I, unfortunately, I did not take SATs because uh, my university did not require that. So I did not spend time uh, taking SATs. But I wish I had because that just makes you eligible for all the exams, all the universities across the world. Uh, AP exams are also good because it just gives you an extra edge and leverage in your classes when you're abroad. So my, I did not have to take any exams as such, but to be ready for abroad applications and in a very good school in an ideal place, it's always good to start from grade, at least by the end of grade 11, you should be sure of where you want to go. And the application process uh, usually starts right after, um, right after your uh, those exams that take place before board exams, the tests mm -hmm. that take place. So sometime around Feb, March, you should be start applying if you want to start your fall term in August or September. Right. So before the board exams, if you are applying to a college, on what basis uh, should we present our marks? So that is... Uh, that again just depends from university to university they have different requirements but it's mostly because you have your pre-board exams so those score matter a lot right. and abroad applications they look a, they look a lot into what you have done beyond academic academics mm -hmm. so uh, that is something very important to look on if you're planning to go abroad after your class 12 and back, like to do your bachelor's or anything like that, make sure that you do, that you explore yourself beyond your school. Do things like taking projects, getting involved with uh, not-for-profits. That's really nice. And uh, yeah, so pre-board scores as well as your class 11 scores, they matter uh, a little bit along with your SATs if you're taking that. Right. Pre-board exams would be something that you would be presenting for applications because that is the only results that you would be having. So make sure that you do well in your class 11 finals and 12 half yearlies and your pre-boards. Right. And when uh, will the universities expect your board exams to be presented, uh, to be submitted at some point in time? Or is the pre-board exams, uh, pre-board exams itself is good to get a confirmation from the universities? Uh, so, again, uh, Venkatesh, it just depends from right. university to university. Right. I applied late so uh, because I took a gap, sort of a gap year. Right. Where I was uh, working and doing jumping from university to university right. in India. Right. So, uh, but from what uh, I have done research on, it's, it's the pre-board scores that you give and the university has no such criteria as to when you would submit that as long as you get in your applications of your class 11 and any latest exam that you have completed till that time can be submitted. So if you don't have your pre-board scores, right. you can give your half yearly scores for that right. matter. And right. if you have any supporting exams like your SATs, that that looks good enough. Right. So right. not a problem. Right, right. And uh, usually students will write a statement of purpose um, for getting uh, when they are applying for the universities. So as a, a student who has completed his 12th grade, um, what sort of statement of purpose uh, can one write to stand out from the crowd? How do we present ourselves? So I would, when I made my statement of purpose, I made sure that I link my professional goals mm -hmm. that I want to achieve from the university to my personal goals that is uh, linked to what I want from my life which is linked with everything that I want to do abroad mm -hmm. so tailoring and making it more personal and very genuine and narrating a good story as to where you come from what you have done how you think through things 
is a very good way to present your sop i think standing out is always being humble to where you come from and your culture like for example when i was writing my statement of purpose i mentioned that doing an economics or uh, that time i took economics so i mentioned that doing an economics course with the university of regina is going to help me uh, elevate my knowledge and the skills that would help me get a good understanding of how things work around the world which i was always curious about mm. and it would also give me an edge and uh, and and an opportunity to stand out in my country when i bring those skills back mm. so that is something that i feel looks good when you show that you are very linked to your home grounds right that also helps when you up, write an sop for your visa Right. you have to show a very good standing and a very good link to your country because they want to make sure that um, you would be coming back so right, right. Uh, you have to have a very good link and a strong connection to your home right. so that is how i had tailored my sop mentioning how my economics knowledge or my finance knowledge would help mm-hmm. me back in my country mm-hmm. that just helps you stand out anyway right so as you were researching on universities uh, multiple universities to apply uh, what were the key um, parameters that you noticed in university of regina and what made you to choose university of regina so university of regina is is considered one of the smaller universities in canada Uh, but it it has a very good business school so that is why i was always i always had a had an eye for that mm-hmm. most importantly saskatchewan has very good uh, immigration pathways mm-hmm. so i wanted to keep that in mind and given my financial constraints and budgetary uh, situation i just chose the best of both worlds so the key indicators that i was me- mostly looking for was a good immigration pathway after completing my university given the financial situation and second the opportunities and uh, uh, exploration abilities that you can get from that was also very important so i always wanted to be a big fish in a small po- pond and i got that opportunity in regina so right. that was something that i was looking for right so as part of this program uh, definitely in a university that would have, from the business school that would have, that would be a lot of uh, things to um, network you or make you participate in a lot of different things can you please uh, tell us about the kind of programs that you have in the university oh yeah of course hill school of business has amazing uh, opportunities and the city itself is growing a lot like i feel I feel Regina is soon going to be the new tech mm-hmm. tech startup hub for the whole of Canada, or at least even Western Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, the opportunities and things outside academia would be from the Hill School of Business. Would be like we have teams like JDC West, we have Enactors, we have the Hill School of Business, we have a marketing association as well. and even university of regina international has a lot of opportunities like you can become an international peer advisor which i am mm-hmm. after your second semester yeah. university also offers you an ambassador program where you uh, where you take leadership opportunities and you develop those skills by doing events hosting events taking care of events so i've done i've done take downs i have hosted events i have organized events just volunteering and gaining those skills and opportunities networking with people i think that is what university of regina help, really helps you with and the programs outside campus well there are a lot there are lots of places like regina food bank red cross saskatchewan uh uh saskatchewan small saskatchewan right. volunteering places like regina open door society and the tech startup i mentioned since because of the cultivator which is an incubator by uh, connexus credit union mm-hmm. and it's it's growing a lot like i participated in the 24 hour startup with connexus and we won uh, we won 4000 dollars for coming up with an idea overnight and eventually the team got 10 grand so that was a huge thing and we are planning to work on it mm-hmm. so things like that also really uh something that stood out to me for sure awesome awesome great congratulations 
thank you great um really uh, amazing to hear and you also mentioned about the scholarships uh, that the university offer to international yeah. students uh, oh, can yeah. You, yeah can you please tell us is there any uh, timeline that uh, if we apply before then the chances of getting scholarships is more and mm-hmm. and is it the scholarship is um, generally given for all international students or how common it is or how difficult it is to get a scholarship so scholarships entrance scholarships are very limited mm-hmm. i got a 3000 dollar scholarship as an international student and that's it so <clears throat> when you submit your application way before the deadline usually they set at least a week ahead the deadline that if you submit it by this time you will get entrance scholarship mm-hmm. so something like that uh d- does take place in the university of regina but i would say overall when you enter the program and you en- enter the university there are a lot of scholarships that you can apply from time to time which are eligible for international students uh domestic students permanent residents even uh, there are specific scholarships for athletes specific scholarship to apply if you're volunteering taking leadership skills to a different level and also for women so there are there are a lot of scholarships when you enter the university but a limited ones are available at the entrance level for sure right and uh, regarding the visa process Uh, yeah. was it a smooth process or uh, is there anything to be specifically keep, keep in mind as one apply for visa for the student visa so, uh, visa process i wouldn't give any advice no. but i would just say that i had a smooth process okay. because i had a very good helping hand for that uh, i don't really uh, i don't really experiment with immigration i'm very clear cut and i take assistance i would highly encourage that if you are unsure of handling papers and documents yourself it is okay to pay a little more than getting backlashed by something very very silly mm-hmm. so my my visa process was very smooth it was done well uh, i just applied at the right time with the right people and i had a good mentorship throughout so the visa process was good i can just say that it can be stressful because you're constantly worrying when it's going to come and have any yeah. change yeah. so it's okay to take that i uh, even if i say something i know it wouldn't help yeah. but know that this too shall pass and you will right. get to right. a lot bigger and better places right was there any mandatory that you have to pay your first year entire fees to file for visa or was there was okay all right yeah like uh, so in so for university of regina and i think canada overall you have to have at least 10000 canadian as your gic right. so gic stands for guaranteed investment certificate and you have to show that amount when you enter canada so that was something mandatory and you also had to show that you paid your first year of university fee mm-hmm. these two were the mandatory uh, amount that i had to take care of and i also took travel insurance which i would encourage everyone to do so because you never know all right so is uh, health insurance provided to all international students by the university or something like you have to take on your own uh, how does it work in saskatchewan uh, so in saskatchewan we have uh, we uh, we have a health card system here so we you get a health card mm-hmm. uh that's free of cost mm-hmm. yeah i think yeah it's free i just did it a year ago i do not specifically remember but right. yeah you have to get a health card in case you want to visit doctors or get medicines mm-hmm. uh you also get health insurance from your university mm-hmm. so a part of it is covered provided you get uh, provided you get an account with canada life so you get insurance from that and eventually when you start working even the company covers your dental cost health cost and extended health benefits as well right. so a part of it is definitely covered and it is automatically deducted from your university fee so keep a lookout right. of that as well right and um, as part of this program uh, is co-op opportunities provided for the students how does the um, internship uh, process works out so a uh, funny thing venkatesh our university is the first university in western canada to start coop mm-hmm. and we completed 50 years uh, in 2019 mm-hmm. uh, we have one of the best coop programs at least in business mm-hmm. 
people get placed uh, in good places and lots of opportunities for co-op so at our university the basic criteria to start co-op is you would uh, you need at least 54 credit hours mm-hmm. and you need to complete certain subjects to be eligible for co-op uh, i will be applying for my co-op work permit so that i can start my co-op next year and it's a it's a, it's not a it's not a humongous process or something that you can't wrap your head around we have a very good uh international student service so we can just go there and ask them to help us out with that and they they, they just sit down with you and help you fill up the form mm-hmm. so everything gets uh really sorted when you have that kind of support mm-hmm. the co-op and internship opportunities are available in regina and saskatchewan or even the whole of canada just depends on the applicant who's applying because for most international students they are a little scared to uproot again and move to another place for a mm. few months and again come back mm. so most international students usually choose regina or saskatchewan as their place of go mm. but yeah there are a few who do go out to like ottawa toronto vancouver montreal newfoundland mm. halifax so people do get placed all over canada that's for sure and there are a few i know even who go to states as well Mm-hmm. so oh okay nice. lots of opportunities yeah a, a student a friend of mine actually recently got placed in google right. for her summer term as right. a software developer so that itself is a huge thing for a small uh, business school mm-hmm. in in western canada so i feel that's a huge thing to be proud of right right so and uh, how about the living cost in university is it advisable to stay in the university or outside do students stay in, uh, how do the living cost works out so uh, i live off campus right. because on campus for me it's a little um, it's a little expensive right. for sure because uh, i mean you're using the university's facilities uh, and everything it's it's a bit too much right. but uh, yeah again if you can afford it and if it's something that you think it's feasible uh i think it's great to live on campus firstly because you get more uh more opportunities through by working you like you can become a resident assistant and taking take care of housing as well so that's an additional opportunity that you can take place you 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 build great friendships uh when you're living on campus because on campus not many people stay but people who stay they are they are from different places so you build great friendship great network and those bonds are very deep that's what i have seen uh, all across my friend circle that people who live on campus they are very uh, strongly connected to each other but uh, overall the living cost in saskatchewan is less it's just we have a we have high taxes so it's 11% but other than that yeah, the living cost is the most affordable here in saskatchewan that that was one of the reasons why i chose saskatchewan mm-hmm. uh china specifically to uh to continue my studies here so living cost is pretty much affordable and way good right so uh can you give some information on your program how it, how is it structured and uh, what kind of um, subjects uh, can one um expect to learn out of this program and so i am uh, i'm in my sophomore year and i'll be starting my uh, second year in the fall term mm-hmm. right now i'm working so the structure is so that uh, you have to at least take three classes per semester mm-hmm. to be a full time student and you can take up to five if you want to take more you have to meet an academic advisor i am doing a major in finance so there are a lot of there's a finance club called the ur investing mm-hmm. and uh, where you have access to like bloomberg terminals and courses and you can just uh, help those skills uh, help gain those skill and expand this in a university and in a firm level so subjects like you have uh, portfolio analysis uh, investments understanding stocks mathematics or finance so you can get very in depth with those courses and you have a great faculty so that is amazing to have hill school has a great faculty we have a great dean coming coming in uh, this year so i'm really looking forward to that but the structure is so that you have three terms that is fall which runs from 
August end to December. Then you have the winter term, which is from January to April, and then you have the spring term, spring summer, which is consists of two terms. So spring is from May June, summer is from July and August. Right. So that is how our uh, uh, terms are structured. Mm -hmm. You have an option to not study, like for international students, you have an option to not take any classes during summer spring. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that can be done so that you can work full time. But right now, since our 20 hour thing is lifted off, people usually just uh, work as much as possible. That's what I've seen. So the program is structured that way. There is no limit as to you have to complete it in two years or four years. People do their bachelor's for five, six years. So it just depends from person to person how they want to structure their classes. Right, right, right. So, uh, how is the um, part-time system works out? Do uh, students find more jobs on campus or off campus? Uh, what kind of part-time jobs uh, can one expect? So, uh, it's a small city. There is very less population. And since the immigration is good, a uh, lot of people are coming here, but there are not enough jobs off campus. But, uh, like, like I said, if you have the skills, you build on your network, you can get opportunities and accessibilities to a lot of things that you can do here. The part-time system, well, it takes a while, but when you get in, you get in. Mm -hmm. And on campus, uh, on campus, again, it depends on your references. It depends on your grades. It depends on the network that you have. So I would say uh, usually students start with off-campus jobs in their first year and eventually move to on-campus when they have built a certain level of uh, credit hours, uh, good grades, and a good network. So if you have that, sometimes even professor, they often refer you for an on-campus job. So that looks really good. Right, right. And um, can you uh, tell us about the campus life? Uh, campus life is amazing. Uh, I don't... Uh, I don't live on campus, right. but I make sure I enjoy the most of right. it. We have a lot of events from time to time. Uh, there is a great library. We have eight libraries on campus. Mm -hmm. uh, we have lots of events organized by the Hill School, by the UR International. And uh, just building on that, it's a great opportunity. We do have we do have trips coming in. We do have picnics coming in. There are lots of games that keep happening. So you students get free access free tickets for the games mm -hmm. out here. So campus life, campus life is overall really good. You, be, you meet people all across the world. You build those connections and you take it forward. Right. So as, a, as an international student, when they come to this new uh, place, um, are there any programs to make them uh, feel at home or make them adjust to this new environment? So what kind of support can we expect for students? So, this is very interesting. So I am working with a few uh, students here who are good friends and we are kind of actually developing a, a startup out of it. Mm -hmm. And we want to create that support and help out with the initial stages. You know, you, you come here, you set up your social insurance number, health card and stuff like that. So we are working on that. But overall, the, the city does offer a lot of such help that and one of them is regina open door society so they usually help you out with that for international students the ur international itself is a great place to ask for help they do they they do airport welcome welcome booths so we have booths set up from the ur international at the airport where uh where the staff member they welcome the students when they when they have just landed so they help out with that they also help you out with info session about just settling here. What are the things that you need to get done, like your health card, your insurance number, your bank setup, your identification card and things like that. So they do help you out with that seamlessly. Sometimes we have even sometimes, no, we always have an on campus person who comes from Service Canada to help you out, set up your social insurance number and things like that. So, yeah, you do have you do have help for that, for right. sure. Right, right. Uh, can you tell us about the weather in Saskatchewan? How the, weather... <laughs> the weather in Saskatchewan, yeah, this is something that I would not be too positive about right. because the weather in Saskatchewan is terrible. Mm -hmm. 
we have uh, we have temper we have extremes so we have 8 months of winter mm-hmm. where the temperature can go up till like what minus 50 mm-hmm. and in summer it can go up till 35 40 as well so it's it's both both ways like it's high mm-hmm. yeah the weather is pretty uh, bad mm-hmm. but i would say it's still always sunny so it doesn't make you depressed that way or sometimes it does like it's 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 just the weather but usually it's always sunny we get the most amount of sunlight here in Saskatchewan and uh, we enjoy that but i would say that the weather is the the winter is not that bad if if that you can't get through it's not so bad that you that you can't make it it's it's not true you will be able to make it you just have to layer up that's what i have learned uh from the winter in canada is you have to layer up and you need to know what to wear when to wear mm-hmm. and the best way to keep track of that is through weather check like check check the weather every day mm-hmm. before sleeping or before leaving for your bus or like getting into your car just make sure you check your check the weather outside so that you can plan accordingly what you need to wear mm-hmm. and you give at least 10 minutes to yourself before leaving your house so that you can wear your gloves hat uh your topi and your uh everything like just right. got the jacket and everything just make sure that you give yourself that much time to get right. ready and leave the house right and is there anything specific that students have to buy from their home country uh, especially say from tropical countries um to adjust with the weather here uh, is there any advice specific yeah i would say bring the inner that we wear oh, during winter right. that is something it's much cheaper in mm. like in india it's much cheaper so yeah, like yeah. Uh, it's it's good to buy that from there like don't bring one don't bring to bring three four so that right. you can use it constant yeah right. yeah th- yeah yeah right. thermals really right. i'm sorry. i just not yeah. getting that word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah thermals thermals right. is something that you should definitely bring from your home okay right. like it, it's expensive here but right. thermals you are anyway wearing it inside so it doesn't matter if you buy it from here or you buy it from there so bring enough thermals right. and you can also bring bring a good good socks from your home mm-hmm. just bring these two and that is good enough and a an muffler mm-hmm. rest never buy a winter jacket mm-hmm. in in india unless you are applying or unless you are coming during the winter season mm-hmm. because it's be- always better to buy a winter jacket from canada mm. because that is how the the jacket is made adjusting the weather conditions here right. you won't get that good jacket in india or any country though. so i always advise people like just buy the jacket here right. and the best to buy it is uh, in the beginning of summer because right. the winter they are getting rid of those mm-hmm. uh, clothes it's always on clearance and it's always at a much cheaper price because i brought a jacket at 180 dollars mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. people were like just getting that at 30 dollars right now mm-hmm. so i am losing so much money when i could have just saved that but i was coming during the summer mm-hmm. so i anyway did not have that in mind i was but it's settling in here but i would say that if you are planning to come if anybody is planning to come right now just make sure that you ask someone to get mm-hmm. get you a jacket and they can keep it for you right. so that when we can just give it back right 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 awesome so um yeah that's that's a very great advice yeah so with specific to this uh, program obviously the bachelor's will take four years uh, or six years like you said uh, and you told that you are planning for a long time before coming abroad and how do generally students from your friend circle manage their finance do they all have a planning made from their family or how do they manage do indian banks provide loans how do they how, do, how does it happen so for bachelor specific like for masters it's much better because you can get a loan in right. your country and i i wish i had that because i just feel terrible putting that much pressure on my parents mm. but we had it all figured out so that was not a problem but for master students you would definitely get a lot of scho- um, scholarship not scholarship i mean loans mm. like the one that i know of is prodigy prodigy right. is a very good place to get good loans at good interest rates and good amount of time to get back right. then there is hdfc there is even icici bank and there are few banks in gujarat as well that offer good loans right. i'm not sure of the education loan for bachelors because the 
I found out about a lot of them and I could not find any such bank uh, to get access for uh, education loan for bachelors. Prodigy does not offer uh, education loans to bachelor students. And there are, I don't think there is anything. I would love to know if there is uh, a loan system for bachelor students. Uh, yeah, that is a little difficult. And for planning, it again, it, it's very subjective. And I think the earlier you start planning, the better. Mm-hmm. And uh, saving is a way to go. And just just start early is all I would say. Right, right. Great, great. Um, so for, as a final question, I would like yeah, to yeah. Uh, leave the um, floor open for you uh, to say uh, to share anything specific to our viewers. Uh, there, there, are, there are a lot of things that I can share. Well, I function in a quadrant system. So I have personal goals, professional goals and experiences and then a projects that I like to do myself. So personally, I would like to share uh, that whenever you're moving abroad, dream big and be open to any kind of experiences that you can get. Because when you're coming to a new place, you will have a lot of changes. You will have a lot of new things that would be coming in. So make sure you have an open uh, uh, open arms and you have an open mind to absorb those things. Second would be, would be be humble. Canada is such a place where you will find great people, awesome people. And you should always stay humble to them and to, to yourself as well. So those are some uh, personal experiences that I have learned here is, you know, just be simple. And as a student, don't go above your means. I have noticed that when you start working, people, you know, update their lifestyle. They, you know, they want to get uh, the best of the best. But know that it's important to save and invest even you can start investing as an international student here that's not a problem but make sure that you save enough and so that you can sustain as well as even invest in yourself if you want so don't spend on things that you can't uh, afford just because uh, you are starting to work so i have noticed that a lot as Managing finances can be difficult for a newcomer as well as a student. It's new. The whole concept is out of the world. But just try saving. Just try to cut off things that you don't know where to spend to. Understanding the differences between needs and wants. Like you need you need a good uh, winter jacket. But do you actually want it from Zara specifically? No, right? You need to ha- You need to know where you can get it at a good price and it should be good enough because that is a good investment just like winter boots like make sure you spend well for that like don't spend one thousand dollars yeah do your research ask your friends where where they got their boots from so understanding that and making those decisions is very important because these are some long-term assets for you they are long-term investments that you're making for yourself especially for like students who are doing phd or even bachelors You'll be here at least for four years. So make sure that you get a good jacket and you get a good boot for yourself. Professionally, professionally experiences, I would say that, you know, keep meeting new people, keep making those connections. And most important uh, is maintaining those relationships, maintaining those connections, making sure that you connect with them from time to time and be genuine about your ask, be upfront, be confident about yourself. You have moved You have moved from a different country or moved from a different continent overall. So be confident in those experiences. Communicate effectively. Learn to talk to people. So those are some experiences that I've had. And that is some advice that I can share to people who are planning to come to Canada or anywhere. Like just be confident because making such a decision to uproot yourself at such a young age is not easy. Even if you don't realize it right now, later on that that feeling would kick in very soon. You would realize how uh, homesickness is real, how loneliness is real, and that's okay. Just embrace that. Have that attitude to uh, embrace your faults, your your inability, so that you can work on it and be better. And just look out to be the be- to be the best version of yourself. Grow and grow, and just make sure that if something goes wrong, just remember that this too shall pass. And that's all I would like to say. Great, great, great words. What can I say more? Uh, awesome, awesome <laughs> uh, 
example great uh, so viewers um, just like i always uh, conclude uh, no two persons uh, experience are the same so this is the experience of pal and um, uh, take it as a guidance to discover your uh, path and um, like pal said uh, be confident and um, even if you make a mistake uh, be remember that this too shall pass and um, it's a great decision to come abroad and everything will come in line if you are working hard towards your goals everything will fall in line uh, the rest everything will fall in place yeah that's what i to like to yeah. Definitely. Thanks a lot, Paul, for joining today. Thank you so much, Venkatesh, for having me here and giving me the opportunity to share my experience and my journey so far. It's really nice to have someone ask you these questions, and okay, it makes me think as well. So, and uh, I would always say that if anybody is interested to reach out, you can always reach out to me via LinkedIn. Right. And uh, it's thank you so much, Venkatesh, for doing so and bringing people together and. Uh, you know you are impacting a lot and i i wish you all the best for this as well it's it's a great thing that you're doing thanks a lot